Shalom, Shalom, Shalom. This is our body, a slash, Obadiah. WFI Pittsburgh bringing you another cold cup. But first and foremost, want to give all glory and praises to Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shah, Rocket Thumb. All glory and praises to our Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son. O Israel, come to y'all with a cold cut. And the topic of this cold cut is going to be strive for the kingdom no matter what. Strive for the kingdom no matter what. Don't let another lukewarm brother get you out the spirit, bring you down, right? Don't let family get in the way of you doing what you're supposed to do by moving in righteousness. I want to touch on these things because guess what? We all got our mind on the kingdom. Every brother and sister that's congregating is supposed to have their mind on the kingdom and doing what is required from us out of these scriptures. So we're going to go ahead and get into this thing, O Israel, so ain't no need to prolong it. Let's go ahead and jump right on into these scriptures. Let's go ahead and get it. So we're going to start with the book of 2nd Edges, chapter 13 and verse 29. That's right, we're going to start there. Let's see what it says. It's the book of 2nd Edges, chapter 13 and verse 29. Behold, the days cometh when the Most High will begin to deliver them that are upon the earth. I got to read that again, Israel, so let me go ahead and do so. Behold, the days come, the days come, when the Most High will begin to deliver them that are upon the face of the earth. Here's the kick. We are putting in these work for a reason, right? Because we want to be delivered, right? We can't let nobody stop us of that. Not your friends, not your loved ones, not your co-workers, right? We can't let nothing stop us from reaching our goal. Because guess what? You got a lot of brothers that's in this thing, right? That's in the congregations. That's, they still got that old man with them, right? Some brothers bring forth a little fruit and others don't bring in no fruit at all. These are the brothers that like to come or let the spirit enter into them to try to bring you down, right? You know what you get and you know what your goal, focus on that goal. Don't let none of these other worldly people or lukewarm brothers dim your spirit and try to take you out the spirit, right? So let me go ahead and read this again and we're going to go ahead and move on. It's the book of 2nd Ezra, chapter 13, verse 29. Behold, the days come when the Most High will begin to deliver them that are upon the face of the earth. Now, we want to be delivered. That's why we do these. But let's go ahead and move on to the book of Revelation, chapter 22 and verse 12. Let's see what it says. It's the book of Revelation, chapter 22 and verse 12. And it reads, And behold, I come quickly. And behold, I come quickly. And my reward is with me to give every man, to give every man according to, as his works shall be. Right? So we striving. We keeping these laws. That's the commandments. Right? We applying the laws to our lives. We walking in righteousness. That's how we. That's the whole point. Is to walk in righteousness. We gather together. We join together. And get together on these feast days. Right? We doing what the scripture says. So stay focused, Akim. Stay focused on what you got to do. So with that, we're going to go to the book of Revelation chapter 3 and verse 11. Revelation 3 and verse 11. He come quickly and his reward is with him to get every man according to their works. It's the book of Revelation chapter 3 and verse 11. And it reads, Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast. That no man taketh thy crown. That no man taketh thy crown. Not your friends, not your loved ones, your mother, your sister, your brother, your daughter, your children. Nobody ought to take your crown. If you don't got that mindset, man, I don't know. I'm just saying. This thing is serious. It's too serious for certain brothers to be taking it a joke. Because everybody don't take it serious as, as a whole. Like, some brothers may take it serious. But other mothers may take it a whole lot serious. Some brothers may not take it as serious enough, right? And some brothers just may not take it serious at all. The brothers that are not taking it serious at all, you in the way. Straight like that, right? Let me read this one more time. We're going to go ahead and move on. 
It's a book of Revelation, chapter 3 and verse 11. And it reads, Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take that crown, that no man take your crown. No man take you off of the path of righteousness. No man may get you out the spirit, right? You got prideful brothers and the spirits hop on brothers and sisters all the time, right? And when these spirits hop on the brother or sister, they don't know. Most majority of the time, they don't know that's the spirit on them, right? They truly don't know. But in their mind, they're doing everything right. That's why you got brothers, the Lord has set brothers up. To be able to see these things. You got your arcing around you. If a brother tells you that you, you're out the spirit or you're going off in certain type of ways, then be wise and just listen. Right? They see something that you don't. But if it's all up in your mind, you know, you all understand that you're never right. I mean, that you're never wrong. Then, I mean, well, how far is that really going to get you? Okay? But you got a lot of lukewarm brothers that's in the truth. You got a lot of brothers that's came into this truth. Been in this truth for about two years or more and still got that anger spirit with them. Still got that lustful spirit with them, right? Because it got all type of folly in Israel. Brothers is committing adultery. Brothers is getting, brothers that went to jail from their anger. Brothers be getting kicked out from place to place because of their angry and they refuse to fix these problems. They refuse to fix them. But in their mind, they are all right. The Lord set brothers and surrounded you with brothers so brothers can tell you when you're going off. But if brothers is too prideful to be able to take that advice, take that wisdom, then shame on you. And that's on you, right? We trying to get the kingdom and the brothers that we got around us, we want to make the kingdom. We don't want nobody to fail, you know? But, you know, hey, certain brothers don't understand that. But well, let me go ahead and go to the book of 2 Peter's. Y'all know this was a famous scripture. I love bringing this scripture out, but at the same time, brothers don't take this, this script serious enough. Some brothers do not take it serious enough. We're going to 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 10. And it reads, 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 10. Wherefore, the rather brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if ye do these things, you shall never fail. When they say make your calling election sure, we don't know if we're chosen. So we got to do all that we can to try to make sure that we're chosen, right? So we're going to put forth our best efforts, right? If brothers is calling for extra days to go out and do the work, if you got time, then go out and do the work. If brothers is calling for extra Zoom meetings, study missions, let's do that so you can you get bring it. It's never enough knowledge and wisdom and understanding that we can eat up as rose. Always room to improve and it's always room to grow. If you that brother that think I got it now, right? Now you don't have to study as much because you got it now. That's that pride spirit, right? How far you think you're gonna go? How, how far you think you're gonna make it, right? We must understand these things, man. Brothers got to be bringing forth fruit. And you cannot be repeating the same sins that you accomplished. Like if a, bro if a brother commit a sin of adultery, right? That brother is way off. Which, which you, I'm talking about brothers that's in the congregation committing adultery. You never had the Lord with you. The Lord was never with you. You coming in to go ahead against your brother when you're supposed to love your brother? Then come on, man. You got brothers that's in here with that anger spirit, brothers that went to jail and, and things of this nature. They get out and they repeat the cycles. Like, come on, where's your growth? We're supposed to be growing, Israel, not repeating the same mistakes that's getting us jammed up. And that's what a lot of brothers is doing. When brothers fall... They ain't the most humblest thing. But as soon as they back to reading and back to studying, now they, they, they get this high and now they could go up against anybody. Now they can challenge you. They can challenge the brothers that's in high authority. That's pride, right? We must understand these things. We are trying to get the kingdom. That's why I say, brothers and sisters, some brothers that's in this thing, that's lukewarm. They, they in it, they, they out. They in it, they out. They in it, they out. 
Okay, all praises. We want brothers to be in it. We give brothers all these chances because we really want brothers to make it. We don't want to give out or give up on none of our brethren. You know what I'm saying? But there is a limit to what brothers do. Now, you got brothers that's impatient. I'm an impatient brother. I'm going to be patient with my brothers. Now, my brother is constantly repeating the same thing, and I'm giving him counsel on the same thing over and over and over, and he still stays the same. My patience runs low. And a lot of brothers is like that. You know, we want the best for brothers, but you got to be able to take the counsel and take correction. You got brothers that don't like to take correction in this thing. How is that? How can you grow if you can't take correction? I mean, that's just a question. Let's go to the book of Proverbs. Go to the book of Proverbs, chapter 1 and verse 5. Proverbs 1 and verse 5. Let's see what it says. This is the book of Proverbs, chapter 1 and verse 5. A wise man will hear and will increase learning, and a man of understanding shall attend unto wise counsel. When you're attending unto wise counsel, you're taking it in. You're eating it up. Okay, these brothers see something that I don't see. Let me humble down. Let me hear these brothers out. And then after the, the conversation, when I got that free time to myself, now I can examine myself. I can think about the things and try to see the things that they was talking about, right? But if you in defense, you bucking up. No, you defending yourself. You cutting the, look, you cutting leadership off, right? Leadership trying to explain to you cutting leadership off. That's pride, whether you want to hear it or whether you don't. Pride is pride. And when brothers got a prideful spirit or got brothers got spirits on them, they can't see it at that time, okay? Let me go ahead and read this one more time. We're going to go ahead and move on. Because remember, the key thing is, let no man take that crown, right? Watch who you be with. Like, you know, don't don't be around these lukewarm brothers like that, man. They, and they start telling you to bring you down. They start talking about brothers behind their backs. You know what I'm saying? Staring up mischief. Always wanting to go against their brethren, Right? Don't mind putting hands on their brother. Doing, the Lord is not dealing with that. Brothers, some brothers think that you could just repent. They could do something to another brother. Then I, I repented already. I'm good now. No, you're not good. You're not good. And that's going to lead you into that lake of fire. Let me go ahead and get the book. Let me read this one more time. We're going to go ahead and move on. The book of Proverbs, chapter 1, and verse 5. A wise man will hear and will increase learning. And a wise I'm just like it. And a man of understanding shall attend unto wise counsel. Let's go to the book of Matthew real quick. I'm going to go to the book of Matthew chapter 5 and verse 6. It's the book of Matthew chapter 5 and verse 6. Let's see what it says. Matthew 5 verse 6. And it reads, Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness. For they shall be filled. For they shall be filled. He said, blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness. When you hunger and thirst after righteousness, that's letting you know that you're focused. When you thirst and hunger after righteousness, you actually are pitting these laws and the, the understanding that you have learned. You're applying them. I stress that a lot to my brothers that's up under me. You know I'm saying I push that. Make sure you apply in the scriptures. We all know certain scriptures. A lot of us know scriptures, but it's hard for Israel to apply them. That's why they constantly get out of the spirit. That's why they that the anger spirit overcome them all the time. That lustful spirit overcome them all the time, right? That that deceiving spirit. You know what I'm saying? You just quick to manipulate people. You was quick to manipulate people in the world, right? And you bring that same spirit into the truth, and you be trying to manipulate your way around. That come on, man. Come on. We have to apply. When we apply these laws, the laws is what changes us. We're going to change, and others is going to see it. We must understand that. Let me read this one more time. We can go ahead and move on. It's the book of Matthew chapter 5 and verse 6, and it reads, Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Right? He said, blessed are they that thirst and hunger after righteousness. Now, why would he say that? Let's get it. Let's get when, when you are blessed. He said, blessed are they that do thirst and hunger of a righteousness. I'm going to go to the book of Revelation chapter 22 and verse 14. Let's see what it says. It's a book of Revelation chapter 22 and verse 14. And it reads, blessed, blessed are they 
that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life. That's why it's blessed to hunger and thirst after righteousness, because guess what? That's going to get you to be applying the scriptures. That's going to get you to change. That's going to get that knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of the spirit to come upon you. You're going to in increase, right? With wisdom. Let me get that again. Revelations 22 verse 14. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gate of the city. Through the gates of the city. I'm going to go a couple of scriptures, a couple chapters back in the book of Revelation chapter 3 and verse 5. Let's see what it says. Revelation 3 and verse 5. He that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white remnant. And I will not, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life. But I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. That's what we want. We chase in the kingdom. We want our name the Lord to take our name to his father, man. That's what we want. That's the whole goal in this. That's why we're enduring all this temptation. That's why we're going through the things that we go through, right? Because it don't matter. This is what we got to go through. This is what the this is the lot that the Lord gave me. Then so be it. He gave it to me because I can do so. We all got to have that mindset. So when you're going through tribulation and you're going through things that's real hard upon you, understand the Lord gave it to you because you can handle it. It's only when you let these thoughts and Satan hop in your mind and start staring things up and have you, you know what I'm saying, kind of looking towards the wayside. I'm going to go to the book of Revelation, chapter 20, verse 15. It's the book of Revelations, chapter 20 and verse 15. Very short video. Revelation 20, verse 15, and it reads, And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Your lukewarm brothers, tighten your game up. The Lord set brothers over you for a reason. If these brothers see something in you and they tell you, don't be proud about it, just take the correction. Try to understand, ask questions. Okay, what am I being proud on? Get the information. Don't be in defense and be all proudful and want to sit there and buck up because that's not going to get you nowhere, right? Every brother, Lord set brothers over brothers for a reason. And these brothers want to see you prosper. Understand that. Brothers got to make sure they bring in forth fruit the correct way according to the scriptures. Too many brothers come in this thing and it's the same, right? You love that old man. That's why you can't get rid of certain things because you love them. Right? Now, I understand that the Lord gives different brothers different lots. But some brothers just come right out of this thing. Once brothers get this information and know about the truth and everything, they stop doing what they do. Suppose that was wicked completely. They stop doing those things just like that. Right? Why? Because we understand who's truly in charge. We're not in charge no more. So we humble down real fast. We're going to apply these scriptures to us because we want to please the Lord in every way. We don't want to keep disappointing the Lord, especially over the same sins, over and over. Let's go ahead and read this one more time. We're going to go ahead and move on. It's a book of Revelation, chapter 20 and verse 15. And it reads, And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Was cast into the lake of fire. That proud spirit gonna get a lot of brothers. As if you're proud, you ain't doing a damn thing wrong. When you lean on your understanding, your own understanding, who's there to correct you? The Lord said he put people in your life. For a reason. All right, this is the book of Daniel, chapter 1 and verse 12. Y'all know where I'm going. Let's see what it says. Daniel 1 and verse 12. It's like I, I need Daniel 12 and 1. <laughs> I want to sound it right. Daniel 12 and 1. It's a book of Daniel chapter 12 and verse 1. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time. And at that time, Thy people shall be delivered. Thy people shall be delivered. Everyone 
that shall be found written in the book of life. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life and some to, ever, to shame and everlasting contempt. Listen, Israel, we have a goal. Don't let your works be in vain. Make sure you're doing what you're supposed to do to get the kingdom. Make sure you listening to the brothers that God set up over you for them to help you get through as well. Don't get prideful like you, could, you got it on your own. Don't be proud. I can't be prideful. I got leaders above me. When I need something, I go to my leaders if I need something. The same way if you need something, you go to the brothers that's over you. It's plain and simple. But don't have it in your mind and lean on your own understanding that everything you're doing is good. Everything you're doing is righteous. We can't have that type of spirit. We got to be learning and applying the scriptures. Like I said before, a lot of times, a lot of brothers and sisters have that issue with applying the scriptures. We cannot be the same as we came into this thing, especially if you've been in this thing for two to three years and you still got that same spirit with you that you never let go. I hope this video was edifying. Don't let no man take your crown. Not your family, not your friends, no one. Keep your mind on the kingdom. We right here, Israel. So with that, we want to give all glory and praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, Barak and Thumb. All glory and praises to our Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son. Continue to stay strong. Shalom.